Hey guys, Ivan here and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the best coaches in 2022. We're going to be looking at the top 5 instead of making the top 10, which I could. I have 10 coaches. I will make a top 5 list. As far as the other 5 guys, it's really hard to rank them. I gave my best to rank the top 5 guys. The other 5 coaches are just going to be honorable mentions. And we are mainly going to be looking at the Mr. Olympia 2022 and that's how we're going to rank them. We can take a look at the Arnold Classic as well and some other shows too, but mainly it's gonna be about what their clients did at the Mr. Olympia 2022. So let's start. Let's go with fifth place coach in the world. And this year it has to be Chad Nichols. Now this guy is the creator of the best bodybuilder of all time, Ronnie Coleman. He coached some other legends of bodybuilding like Nasser El Sambari, like Flex Wheeler. And of course he helped Big Remy win the Mr. Olympia twice. Last year this list would be much different. He would be probably my best coach in the world. However, this year he drops down at the bottom of my top 5 because he failed. He failed with Big Ramy. Big Ramy looked the worst he ever looked in his career. Whose fault is this really? Is Chad the one to be blamed or is it Big Ramy? If he hurt himself on training and that's how he got an injury and that's why he looked the way he looked, I don't know, I can't be sure. We still didn't hear anything from Chad Nichols, but he is Big Ramy's coach and he is responsible for how Big Ramy looks and that's why I have to put it on him. Also William Bonac. William Bonac was the runner-up at the Mr. Olympia in 2019. He almost won the Iron Classic this year, he won Boston Pro and he was supposed to be in the top mix. I expected him to be in top 3, however he placed 9th which is a big drop for William Bonac and still we have no response from Chad Nichols. We don't know what went wrong with these two guys, but if we are judging these coaches by the results of their clients, I don't know how or why this happened, but these two guys failed and their coach was Chad Nichols and his results this year at the Mr. Olympia weren't very good. He actually failed and that's why I have him in my fifth spot this year, 2022, not overall ever, just this year. Now let's go to fourth spot and my fourth best coach in the world right now is Milo Sharchev because he had great success this year with Samson Dauda who cracked the top six, which is arguably the biggest, the most pleasant surprise of the 2022 Mr. Olympia. Now Big Remy did beat Samson Dauda. So why do I have Milo Sharchev above Chad Nichols on my list? It's because Samson Dauda was nowhere to be found last year at the Mr. Olympia. And this year he made a really big leap. When these guys started working together, Samson flourished. He made so much progress. He was fourth at the Arnold Classic and then he made even more progress for the Mr. Olympia where he cracked that top six. Many people would argue that he looked even better than Big Remy. I would not say so, but it was kind of close. But the reason why I have Milos ahead of Chad Nichols is because of the progress. Big Remy and William Bonac digressed. They were coached by Chad Nichols and they dropped down Big Remy for first to fifth and William Bonac from sixth to ninth. Samson moved up a lot of places. So he made a lot of progress with the help of Milo Sharchev and that's why, in my humble opinion, I have Milo Sharchev in my fourth spot of the best coaches in 2022. Now let's move on to the third spot, which is going to be Abdullah. His last name is Alo Taibi, but I'm sure most of you guys know him just as Abdullah. Now this guy is a bronze medalist on my top 5 best coaches list. Why is that? Well, of course, he has Brandon Curry. Brandon Curry won the Arnold Classic this year, but this year the Mr. Olympia, he placed 4th. So he also dropped down a couple of spots because last year he was 2nd. But I would not say that Brandon Curry digressed. I would say he made progress with Abdullah. I think he got bigger. I think he looked much, much bigger and more impressive. The reason why he dropped was the competition. Nick Walker made more progress. 
And he brought good conditioning. We can say that Abdullah kind of failed with conditioning with Brandon Curry. He maybe wasn't super conditioned, but that's what they went for. They wanted size. They wanted to challenge big Remy with the size. They wanted Brandon to be big and round and full, and they achieved what they wanted. Brandon looked bigger than ever, but Nick Walker made a lot of progress and he was more conditioned. That's why he edged out Brandon Curry. And we also have an addition of Derek Lansford, who is just simply super, super talented, looks insane. And then, of course, Hadi Chupan, who made a lot of progress, came in bigger and just finally brought his absolute best. And that's why these three guys beat Brandon Curry. Not to say that Brandon Curry failed, he was just beaten by some better bodybuilders. Also, Abdullah did not only have Brandon Curry, the Mr. Olympia, maybe he had more guys, but I also know that he coached Patrick Johnson. Patrick Johnson qualified for the Mr. Olympia by winning France Yamamoto Pro Show and he placed second at the very competitive Arnold Classic UK. He placed 13th at the Mr. Olympia this year and he looked phenomenal, I gotta say. Especially at Arnold Classic and France, he was shredded, man. He was peeled at the Mr. Olympia. I think his conditioning was a little bit worse. Maybe they tried to fill him up as well to make him bigger and rounder and it backfired just like with Brandon. But he still did look amazing and he placed, you know, he placed 13th. He wasn't out of that top 15 where nobody really has a placement. He had a place, he was 13th, which is a success. So overall, in my opinion, Abdullah is third best coach in the world. Now, as far as the second best coach in the world, it has to be Matt Jansen, man. It has to be him because two reasons first of all he has nick walker bro he has nick walker nick walker made so much progress from last year that he actually cracked that top three and it was pretty close between him and the two guys in the in the top three but a lot of that progress could be pinned on his former coach dom super slice so maybe these two guys dom and matt could share that second spot i don't know we can ask them if they're okay with it but dom definitely did help because because he worked with Nick Walker the entire offseason. Nick Walker did not give him any credit for that, which is not cool at all. He made a lot of progress with, with Dom during the offseason, but he was prepped by Matt Jensen for the Mr. Olympia, and that's why Matt Jensen takes all the credit. And Matt Jensen used to coach Nick Walker for a long time before Dom took over. So, yeah, Matt Jensen has to be the one to take the credit for Nick Walker. And also, Matt Jensen has 212 Mr. Olympia champion this year, Sean Clarida, who also peaked really freaking well. I mean, this guy looked like a mini version of Ronnie Coleman. Crazy roundness, crazy fullness. He just peaked so well. He looked amazing. He looked conditioned. He looked big for his uh, frame, of course. And he won the title. So with those two guys on his roster, Matt Jensen is my second best coach in the world in 2022. And now we get to the best coach in the world. And I would have to add, in the history of bodybuilding, it's him versus Chad Nichols. You can tell me whatever you think, but I think the best coach in the world right now and in the history of bodybuilding has to be Honey Rambert. I mean, this year he has two guys in the top two. Hari Japan won the Mr. Olympia. He looked amazing. And Hari Japan doesn't really have the best structure. He does have that crazy, grainy, separated, hard look that is, I'm sure, partly genetic. I noticed a lot of Iranians have that kind of crazy look. So that has to be genetic a little bit. But I'm sure Hani Rambud is definitely a factor in that look. Also, he has Derek Lansford, who made a transition from the 212, and in his rookie open bodybuilding year, he cracks the top two, he beats a whole bunch of great bodybuilders, and he ends up in that runner-up position, which is a humongous success. Also, in classic physique, Honey Rambert has Chris Bumstead this year, who brings his absolute best of all time, guys, all time. He was always great, and it was a big pressure on Honey Rambert, because Chris Bumstead always looks awesome, he's always great. So what could Honey Rambert do, really? That was the question. And he proved to us how great of a coach he is, because Chris brought his absolute best of all time. He was crazy shredded, he was crazy full, he had that high 
hard, hard look, grainy look, his glutes were peeled like never before, he was definitely the most conditioned that he ever was, and probably the biggest, the fullest, so this was definitely the best version of Chris Bumstead, and it is Honey Rambert who helped him achieve that, so this definitely means that Honey Rambert is the best coach in the world right now, and in my opinion, again, arguably the best coach of all time in bodybuilding. If you guys disagree, you can tell me down below. If you agree, you can also tell me about that. Now, let's move on to the honorable mentions. I'll try to be as brief as possible with the other five guys, and I'll try to rank them as well. So, in my 10th position, it would be Dorian Hamilton. Dorian Hamilton has Anton Voyant. Anton Voyant probably isn't the most genetically gifted bodybuilder on that Mr. Olympia stage. I don't think he will ever be in that top 10. Not if the competition is as fierce as it is today. But he definitely looked his absolute best so far. Especially considering that he had two bicep tears in the past couple of years and that he had a couple of health issues with his heart so considering all that he definitely brought his absolute best at a Mr. Olympia he looked impressive but you know he didn't even place so that's why I have Dorian Hamilton in my tent now in my ninth I have Ben Chow there was a lot of expectation from Ben Chow at this year's Mr. Olympia because he was prepping a high-caliber bodybuilder, definitely somebody with one of the most popular names in the sport, Hunter Labrada, son of Lee Labrada, who was fourth last year, but we can kind of say that Ben Chow failed. The biggest criticism that Hunter received last year was his back. His back wasn't really up to par to his other body parts, did he improve it? I don't think so. I think he even made it worse. And also, the other thing was conditioning. Did he improve his conditioning? I wouldn't say that. Even maybe a little bit, but not really. Overall, his entire package was probably worse than last year. And that's why Hunter Labrada placed, I wouldn't say so low, because seventh is still a great success. But considering that last year he was fourth and he expected to win the Mr. Olympia this year, he was talking about that openly. He kind of failed. He was coached by Ben Chow, who is a young coach, new coach, doesn't have a lot of guys on his roster. He's definitely on his way up. I don't think Hunter will hire him next year again. We'll see though. Uh, ben Chow also had uh, Dean White in 212. There was a lot of talk about Dean White. Some people thought he was gonna win the 212 Olympia. I don't think he plays the top six. I think he was like 10th or something like that. So Ben Chow is in my uh, ninth spot. In my eighth spot, this might come surprising to some of you, but it's gotta be Patrick Tour, man. I mean, this guy is a great coach, but he failed miserably this year with Ian Valier and Keon Pearson as well. Now, earlier this year, Keon Pearson won whichever show he did, it was a Tampa, I think, and he qualified for the Mr. Olympia. Ian Valier also won Vancouver, and he looked great at that show, but it is Mr. Olympia that we're looking at mainly, and Keon Pearson placed sixth i don't even understand why i think he looked great but apparently it was different in in person i i don't know i guess so but the result was the way it was kyun pearson was sixth even though i thought he was gonna be at least top three many people thought that is it patrick's fault i don't know but it is what it is and then you have ian valier who placed you know 11th he was seventh two times in a row and now he was 11th and it's not the way he placed because there were a lot of great guys coming in uh, like uh, derek lance or like Andrew Jack, but it was more so about the way he looked and about the mistakes that he made with Ian. And Ian talked about this on a podcast. He told us that the reason why he looked so bad was the protocol. And you guys know if he's coached by Patrick uh, Tour, he is the one that is giving him protocols. It's not Ian that is creating these protocols by himself. So whatever decisions Patrick Tour made, they were wrong. And Ian looked really bad, really bad. I think his worst could be that Tampa Pro, I think 2020, where he lost to Hunter Labrada. And this is his probably second worst of all time i mean since he was like a top pro so it is patrick tour's fault for this and that's why i have him in my eighth spot in my seventh spot i have george farah george farah basically created andrew jack and that makes him a really successful coach i mean what we saw from andrew jack at texas pro was just amazing 
And then he also won British Grand Prix looking a little bit worse, but you know, at the Mr. Olympia stage, where are all the other top guys, Andrew Jack did not look that impressive in comparison, but you know, 7th best coach in the world, that's still a huge success for George Farah if you ask me. He also had Blessing of Oribu, who won 2 pro shows this year actually, Indy Pro and New York, which is a pretty big show, however the competition wasn't really that great, but he still won those 2 shows. However, at the Mr. Olympia, he failed miserably. He looked horrible. I don't know whose fault this is. Uh, Blessing did say that he was off after that New York for a long time and his body just didn't have enough time to respond to gear. And that was obviously George Farah's decision. We didn't really hear him, what he has to say about what happened, but as soon as we do, I will make a video about that as well. So for now, I have George Farah in my seventh spot. As far as that 6th spot, I think it has to be Chris Asito. Chris Asito is arguably one of the best coaches in the world. I mean, he was coaching Jay Cutler when he beat Ronnie Coleman. He was coaching Sean Roden and so many other great bodybuilders. But this year, he didn't really have like the, the, the biggest roster. He, however, did help Ramon Dino. Chris Asito coached Ramon Dino to be in that top 2 in Classic Physique, which I believe is a big success. Classic Physique is a super popular division right now, it's really close to open division if you ask me, and Chris Bumstead has arguably one of the best bodies in the history of the, of the world, really. Maybe the best body of all time, not by the bodybuilding judging criteria maybe, but overall probably the most impressive physique ever, and Ramon Dino was the one to push him. They actually had one call out, only two guys. And I think this was mainly because Ramon Dino had perfect symmetry. Chris Bumstead legs weren't symmetrical, one leg was smaller than the other, and one of his biceps was also messed up. So that's why I believe Ramon Dino was pushing uh, Chris Bumstead actually, even though Chris brought his absolute best as far as conditioning, hardness, fullness, stuff like that, and in some poses he looked absolutely unbeatable, but because of this asymmetry, Ramon Dino did push Chris Bumstead, and he also looked phenomenal, he picked really, really well, and it is because he was coached by Chris Asito, so in my opinion, Chris Asito is sixth best coach in the world this year. Also, Chris Asito coached Rafael Brandao, even though this guy was only 10th, I gotta say, top 10 in the world in this lineup was a success, and maybe it's not like one of the best placings, but with this beautiful aesthetic physique, smaller physique that looks more like classic physique, cracking the top 10 of Mr. Olympia, beating guys like Ian Valier, like Michael Crisio, and so many others, it's still a big success, so in my opinion, Chris Asito, again, is top 6 coach in the world. If you guys like this list, tell me down below, if you disagree with something, you can also tell me down below. If you guys enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel, I'm trying to get to 50k subscribers. If you guys watch my content but you're not subscribed yet, please do so, it would mean so much to me. Thank you guys for all your support and for watching this video, all the best guys and bye bye.